Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today, as you requested, we're gonna look at lens correction a little bit more in depth. Sorry guys, we're gonna use the exact same model that we used last time, but what we're gonna do is pick a different photo. Let me get one with the long horizon line. I like this one right here. There we go. I like this a lot. Now, as you can see here, just by looking at that horizon line, we have barreling that's going on. If I take my straightening tool, you can see it really well. Let me click here and drag that to the other side. Now, as you can see, dead center, it is much higher or lower, depends on how you look at it, as the, to the line, right? So you can see that barreling is happening here. Well, we wanna get rid of that. The image is dipping to the left and dipping to the right on the edges. That's barreling. Basically, it's fisheye, right? We wanna get rid of some of that. Now, what's nice about Aftershot Pro 3 is it has built in a lot of profiles for many of the different cameras that we use as well as the glass that we attach to those cameras. Now, it takes the XF data and as you can see here, it is found in the XF data for this image that I was using a Canon. It was a 5D Mark II, and it was an EF 24-70 2.8L glass, and it was shot at 24 millimeters for this photograph. Now, knowing all this information, when we click Enable Lens Correction, you see what it just did? It just got rid of that barreling. Okay, so now if we go and take a look at straightening this image and we click right here at one edge and click to the other, you can see that we're perfectly straight now. That image, that horizon line is perfectly straight. There's no more barreling. The edges aren't drooping to the sides. So as we said, it will correct for barrel distortion, which is what we just corrected for, or pinch as I call it, or you can call it pin cushion. Now what that is, is if you take the photo and you grab the center and pinch inward, it sucks the image into it. That is called pinch or pin cushion distortion. It will also correct for that. So this right now is perfect. We have enabled lens correction. It has fixed the barreling and it's now perfectly straight. Excellent. Now, what you guys wanted to know was more about the chromatic aberration correction as well as vignetting. Now, we know that chromatic aberration is just horrid, right? We hate it. What happens is, if you don't know what it is, it's basically when you take something that's very high in contrast, something very bright and really dark, and you put them up against each other, digital photos just end up with this chromatic aberration. What that is, is that fringing. You'll see either cyan or you'll see red or yellow or possibly blue right along that edge. So let's click into the model and bring it up maybe 100% or 200%. Now, here's a perfect example of it. You see right around her hairline here, it's almost like a blue cyan. Let's go down a little bit. Oh, look. There it is, look at that, on her shoulder. Also, you can see this blue or cyan that's popping through. Now, as you can see here on the right-hand side, we have something called chromatic aberration correction. If you click on that, it does nothing. It sets everything to zero, zero. It's up to us to figure out what we need to correct. Where is the problem? So for this photograph, we can see that cyan in the fringe is a problem. So if we take the R slash C, which stands for red slash cyan, right? We take that cyan and we want to move it a little bit to the right, let's say 0 0.70. There we go, that looks nice. And as you can see, that fringe or that, let's call it cyan fringe is gone. See the blue is history. If we turn off chromatic aberration, it's right back. Now let's go back up into the hair. We can see all of this blue right around the outskirts of her hair. As soon as we turn chromatic aberration correction on, it's gone. And we only had to add a slight 070 amount of correction. Now you'd say, well, if we're back here at 100%, who really cares, right? But when you print it or when your client zooms in on it and they have blue halos or red halos or yellow halos in all these areas, it's not going to look good. It just doesn't look professional. And the idea here is we want to give the client a professional image as fast as possible. As we know, guys, right? Time is money. 
time is money. So let's move into vignetting. Now, for me, I personally like vignetting, but when you turn vignetting on, as you can see on the edges, I'll turn it off and you can see that it gets dark. And when you turn it back on, it gets bright. Now, once again, Aftershot Pro 3 understands that what with this specific lens, you're gonna get a little darkening around the edges. So it knows how much based on the focal length, based on all that XF data, right? So when we turn it on, what it does is it brightens up around the edges and flattens the image. I personally don't like that. I like to exaggerate the vignetting. So now how do we do that? We turn on or enable vignette correction, and then we have a slider that says strength and a slider that says radius. Now. The slider that, does, that says strength basically controls the darkness or lightness of your vignette. So if we pull that all the way to the left, you can see the vignette turned really, really dark. If we pull it all the way to the right, it turned really, really light. Now for me, some images really look good with a really bright outline around them, let's say a halo around the image. Some of them look really good to isolate the subject with darkness around the image. And that's kind of up to you. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what the radius does now. Now the radius is basically the size of that vignette. As you can see here with the radius on 50, how much is burnt, let's say, around the edges. If we move this to the right and add to that radius, it gets closer and closer in or that radius gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I like it like this, but I think it's a little bit dark. Personally, for me, I would just back down a little bit on the strength, but I would still have that vignette come in so strong. Just because I like it, I like to really isolate the model here and darken those edges up a little bit. So that's it guys, we took a look at barrel distortion as well as pinch or pin cushion distortion and we looked at chromatic aberration and how you can actually fix for that internal to the program really quickly, really fast and have perfect images with no fringing. And then finally, we looked at vignetting. So that's it, guys. I am out of here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so as soon as I come up with new content, you will get it right away. And don't forget, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of the photography tools that I have developed over the years, and some of them might be great for you. I am out of here. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.